In this video, I'm going to talk all about being a tax preparer. So exactly what do tax preparers do? How can you become one? What is the average salary? What are the requirements and what skills do you need? And I will have a free printable in my description box that you can download with all this information because I know it's a lot. All right, so starting off with just the basics, like what does a tax preparer do? It's kind of unique because they basically work for their clients and they work for the IRS. They're kind of representing both parties. So for their clients that they're preparing the taxes for, they want to minimize the tax burden as much as possible. Well, of course, complying with all like the rules and regulations of the state and federal taxes and tax preparers use software to prepare and to file people's taxes. And in many cases, they can often defend a taxpayer to the IRS. And this depends a little bit on the type of certification you have, which is what I'm going to talk about in the next section. So if someone is audited or that they have are taken to court or something for some reason, usually the tax preparer can represent their clients. And other just kind of parts of the day-to-day -day job description is meeting with clients, filling out forms in a detail-oriented fashion, learning that software like I mentioned, billing clients, and you do really have to stay updated with tax laws and codes as they're changing. So don't forget there is likely a fair amount of people skills. You're not just going to be in a room like, you know, filling out forms all day. All right, now going into the types of tax preparers. And again, I'm not an expert on these, so let me know in the comments if I messed anything up, as well as regulations can change a lot from state to state. So make sure to check the rules in your state to make sure you're following all the regulations that you need. All right, but what I found out basically is that there's just a general tax preparer and you can either be credentialed or non-credentialed, again, depending on your state. And, but you definitely need a number, a PTIN number. So that's like your number that tells the IRS that you are allowed to prepare the taxes. And these tax preparers in many cases may work for a bigger company. So they are probably a seasonal worker that is hired like maybe January through April or so. So just a basic tax preparer is a great place to start. And again, make sure you check those local regulations. So I have a friend who just became a tax preparer this year and I chatted with her and she gave me all the dirt on her experience. So that's gonna be my video next week. So I'm gonna tell you what she thought of the test, like how much she spent overall, like what her work hours is she's able to she had to start out working in the office at hr block and now she works remotely for clients so i just found it super fascinating so i'm going to go through all of her experiences and really step by step how to become a tax preparer so she went through hr block and then i don't know if you guys know this but the bookkeeper program that i love is called bookkeeper launch and they actually have a specialized tax preparer program. So I just looked all through it and it looks amazing. It teaches you all that book knowledge that you need for preparing taxes and then passing the test. And then as well as it teaches you tons of stuff about setting up your business. That's why I love this program is because they're so thorough and they also have like amazing customer service. So you have unlimited email support from them. So anytime you have a question, you can always email them. So anyways, if that is something you're interested in, it's going to be linked in the description box as well. I think there's a little free like intro class that they had, so you can check that out to see if you're interested. All right, the next type of tax preparer is an enrolled agent, and this is definitely a step above just a tax preparer. So to be an enrolled agent, you can practice nationwide anywhere you want. You have to get a specific license from the IRS. You have to pass an exam that is fairly difficult, it sounds like. And at this point, you need 72 hours of continuing education. And I guess that's over a three year period. So in my free printable that I mentioned, there's a link there that tells you more information on how to earn an enrolled agent certification. And there's like tons of links in there as well. Cause like I said, I'm definitely not an expert. <laughs> All right. And then there is a certified public accountant or a CPA, which you've probably heard of as a bookkeeper. I work a ton with CPAs. That is what most of my clients hire to do their taxes in answer tax questions. So you can just basically do more stuff. You can file legal documents, like my CPA helped me change my business structure when I needed to. They can work with the retirement savings and things like that. And then there are tax attorneys, which I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you're not interested in being a tax attorney, but basically they help large corporations file taxes. All right, and then the average salary. So I'm sure you're interested in this. And of course it depends on your experience and kind of what level you are with those previous levels that I talked about. But basically on average, I found that you start out making around $20 an hour, which of course can change based on your city and what company you work for. And in my previous video, I actually thought that tax preparers would make more because they're more specialized, but apparently that's not the case. And I think part of this is if you're able to set your own salary or not, like as a bookkeeper, I can charge $50, $60 per hour to my clients. But if I was working under the umbrella of a larger company, then they would set my rate. And so I bet some tax preparers are making a higher rate depending on their expertise and their certification. But it's good to know if you're starting at the ground level, you're making more than minimum wage, but not like an astronomical hourly rate. All right, and what are the requirements for being a tax preparer? I'm really gonna dig into this in super detail in my next week's video, but 
but you need to have a high school diploma and then you need to have training through a voc vocational program. You'll probably have to familiarize yourself with different tax program softwares like TurboTax, Tax Act, H&R Block, those type of things. And in most states, you need to take an exam. And I was just looking at the pass rates on that exam in Oregon, and it actually seems a little bit challenging, like sometimes less than 50% of the people pass. And I'm not sure how much they've all studied, like if they're, you know, have really put in the time but it's not just like an easy pass. You need to get that number I was talking, the PTIN, preparer tax identification number, and then oftentimes you need to get a license from your state. So definitely subscribe to my channel to see that video next week. I'm gonna let you know exactly how much Amy paid for all of her certifications and how she's doing now. And while you're at it, I'd love it if you give this video a thumbs up. That really does help me out a lot. All right, and finally, what skills do you need to be a tax preparer? As I mentioned before, that customer service experience or skills is really going to help you when working with clients. Because especially during tax time, you might be cycling through multiple clients quickly. Uh, you know, there might be problems that you encounter or something like that. So those people skills are really going to come in handy. You need active listening skills and you want to use those critical thinking skills to decide, you know, what's the best tax advantage I can get for this client. Time management is a big one. This is definitely a crunch time business. And that's actually one of the reasons I didn't really want to be a tax preparer is because I didn't want to be super busy one time of year. Although I know some people like that because then you can work really hard and then kind of be more flexible the rest of the year. As well as being organized is really going to help you out. And I think I already mentioned attention to detail. Don't forget to check my description box with a free printable with all of this information. Ow, just poked myself and tons of different links to a bunch of resources. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. and I will talk to you next week.